1986's The Worst Witch is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yes, it does look like it was filmed on a grip's personal video camera. Yes, the effects sometimes are painful to the eyes, the editing and pacing are questionable, and major characters do suddenly change their motivations and their entire personalities in the resolution, but it has an undeniable charm that sparkles brightly and it has for its main cast the dream blunt rotation of Tim Curry, Feruza Balk, Charlotte Ray, and Diana Rigg. You know what? That cast may be 95% of why this movie's great. I could just stop here, but I set up the lights and camera, put on pants. The year was 1994, and I was in the local blockbuster video looking for something to occupy me while my parents watched something rated R. They were hoping I'd pick something, anything other than Robin Hood Men in Tights, which we'd already taken home multiple times. Uh... Has he seen this one? And it was the start of something beautiful. I share this charming anecdote because I assume I'm legally required to disclose that my nostalgia for this may potentially cloud my judgment. I enjoy it just as much in my 30s as I did when I was a wee lad, when I wished I could also have a pet cat and fly on a broom. I hope that by the time we ride off into the sunset on our personal Tim Curry's Yes That's a Thing That Happens, you'll see how this weird little movie has not left me for decades. For those unfamiliar with this outstanding work of art, The Worst Witch is adapted from a children's book of the same name by Jill Murphy. We start by following Mildred Hubble portrayed by a young Feruza Balk shortly after her turn as Dorothy in the nightmare fuel of a movie Return to Oz, which is also a whole vibe. Mildred is a student at Miss Cackle's Academy, a boarding school in the British countryside where young girls are trained up into witches, and if you are starting to see similarities with another highly successful IP, I will now mention that The Worst Witch predates the 1997 release of that first book in the series and therefore is not a pale copy and is in fact the earlier and superior work. Mildred, though, has one problem. She's really bad at her witchery. This movie follows her in the lead up to and aftermath of the school's Halloween celebrations, which are to be attended by the famous Grand Wizard, portrayed by Tim Curry. Mildred has to go to classes, where she cowers under the shriveling gazes of her teacher, Miss Hardbroom, in a fantastic performance by Diana Rigg. You probably either recognize her as Emma Peel from TV's The Avengers, if you're British, or from Game of Thrones, if you're normal. Mildred also faces bullying from her peers, most notably from <laughs> Also, Miss Garrett from The Facts of Life is here, and here. Okay, the plot is fairly thin, even for a TV movie, but there is just enough stuff for the characters to do to drive them toward A conclusion. But this latter plot gives plenty of room for the best visual effects the mid-80s had to offer. Did I mention Tim Curry has a song? We open up on our theme song, which plays over a slice of Mildred's daily life at Miss Cackle's Academy, which mostly includes waking up late, being tardy, sloppy, and constantly on the bad side of Miss Hardbroom. Miss Hardbroom is, among other things, a teacher for potions, and the first class we see is a lesson on creating a laughter potion, which, given the title of this movie, goes about as well as can be expected, especially considering you can't fake a potion. After the lesson, in a very oddly edited scene in the headmistress's office, we learn that Mildred spends quite a bit of time in meetings with Miss Cackle after run-ins with Miss Hardbroom. We also learn that if Mildred doesn't start doing better in classes, she could fail to get her witch's junior certificate, which I assume means she won't become a full witch. Also, for those who like these sorts of things, you must be the worst witch in the entire school. In any case, Miss Cackle is a warm and caring presence and shows genuine affection for Mildred. Also, in case you forgot, this movie was made in the 80s. Wait, 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 wait. My Donna. Ma Donna. We then cut to Mildred and Maud, who we've already met, in their beds in the dormitory. Mildred says that she has a problem, which leads to one of the most brutal lines of dialogue in the whole thing. What problem? Specifically. They discuss Mildred's doubts about being a witch, which are repeated only a few scenes later, as well as some of the juiciest gossip about Miss Hardbroom. Apparently, H.B. had been hot and heavy with the one witchy celebrity mentioned in this world, the Chief Wizard? It's at this time that Hardbroom appears from the shadows with a sickly green lighting effect to scold the children in a moment as weird as it is iconic. 
The movie pushes onward with more deft world building in the form of the school song, Morning Assembly, and the introduction of Agatha, Miss Cackle's older twin sister, in her finest Party City costume that they could get in mid-April. When was this filmed? We also learn that none other than THE Tim Curry himself will be visiting the school for their Halloween celebrations. This announcement also happens to occur on the same day that the first year girls receive their black kittens, all except for Mildred, who, being at the very bottom of her class, gets a gray one. She eventually names it Tabby. The first kitten, of course, goes to Ethel Hallow, who is like if Regina George were raised by Satan and she who must not be named. I did mention this was a made-for-TV movie for kids, right? Because we get a relatively unnecessary song from Agatha about how she and the evil witches plan to take over the school. This entire music number takes place as the cats are being distributed. You know, as I'm writing this script, I see that there are a lot more choices made than I had realized in all of my thousands of rewatches. Anyway, it's after the assembly that we get our first real broomstick scene. This is also the first time that I began to suspect that visual effects were a thing. But of course, Mildred being Mildred, she crashes her broom, which snaps in half setting up something important for later. We get more expository dialogue and a rousing game of terror tag, which is like hide and seek, but witchier, I guess. We also get the second event that sets up the plot for later. Ethel cheats at the game by wearing a mask, apparently that's a rule, and a furious Mildred turns her into a pig and then almost immediately turns her back. Uh, what the? Oh my God! Keep these two things in mind. Mildred's broom was broken, and the feud, I guess, with Ethel has escalated. So it will come as no surprise that Mildred's class will be performing the broomstick performance for the Tim Curry, which is a big deal. Mildred, despite being the worst witch in the entire school, makes the team, but has to borrow a broom since the tape and string holding hers together is not suitable for the likes of the Tim Curry, and I'm sure you see where this is going. Also, Ethel sabotages her spare broom. After Tim Curry's amazing musical number, and on Halloween, it's better than a video, and a good start to the performance, the cursed broom goes out of control, ruining the festivities so bad that the Tim Curry leaves. I've got another gig. Distraught, Mildred runs away the next morning into the woods where she meets and defeats Agatha and her evil witch posse, saving the day from a threat no one knew existed. She brings the evil witches, as snails, back to Miss Cackle. Having saved the day, the school gets a half holiday and Mildred is given the opportunity to go flying away on Tim Curry. It is undeniable that this movie lacks the polish of the 2017 Netflix series or even the 1990s British series, but I think that is precisely what gives it its charm. It's a weird little movie with a couple of absolute banger musical numbers and a fantastically overqualified cast. It's also a movie that has made me feel seen. I personally identified with the awkward Mildred, unsure of herself, but hopeful, maybe with untapped potential. I also saw a lot of my strict but excellent teachers in Miss Hardbroom, although without the breakneck heel face turns. I also saw a lot of Tim Curry in Tim Curry. I wish I had some sort of deeper take about growing up that I could give here. It still resides in a very special place in my heart. It's something I go back to whenever I need an hour suspending my disbelief or to hear weirdly cut cat noises. Meow. But as it is, I have no notes. 10 out of 10. Pleasant nightmare.